All right, everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for stopping by, I appreciate it. So today I'm gonna to go over the residential terms and definitions. I do have a whole list here of items that um, came to my mind. Maybe I don't have all of them, so forgive me. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in and I'll probably just throw some pictures up over here, which is gonna take a long time. And there might not be pictures for everything. Some of it just might be um, common sense. So these are in total random order. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in. The first residential term is Romex or wire. And that is gonna be what you are gonna be using to wire up houses, um, even in some commercial applications as well. It's just a uh, type of wire and it is in a plastic sheathing and that can have um, and another term which relates to that, which is um, how you would see it, like as in a 12-2, a 12-3, a 14-2, a 14-3. Um, those numbers are relating to the size, the gauge of the wire and how many um, current carrying conductors are in there. So if you see a 12-2, it's a 12 gauge wire with two current carrying conductors, a hot and a neutral, and it doesn't include the ground wire. The ground wire is just a given. Um, so if you see a 12-3, it's gonna be a hot, a second hot and a neutral. Um, and then, then the 14 gauge is just gonna be a smaller gauge wire with whatever number follows it is how many uncon um, current carrying conductors are in there. Um, next, you got nails. Um, nails are used to uh, put things together, usually on wood applications. And then also a nail gun, which can be used to save you some time so you don't have to nail things by hand with a hammer. Um, and that can be used for nailing on um, wooden objects, which I will tell you, which is near the end of the list. Um, but those are called blocks, um, little pieces of wood basically to, if you need to move a box over or something like that on a stud, you need to space it out to get to a certain spot. Those are little pieces of wood are called blocks. Um, moving on, we got cat five or cat six, which is used for um, two different things these days, at least, um, which is for phone lines and also for internet, um, for your high-speed internet. Then moving on, these are more a uh, few low voltage terms here real quick. And then the RG6, which is your coax cable, which is for wiring in your TV for your houses or also um, maybe your internet as well. Um, and then we got solid wire versus stranded. So basically you're probably gonna be working with all solid wire, especially in Romex. Um, it's pretty much all gonna be solid except for like your higher gauge for like your range, which is gonna be stranded um, once you get like eight gauge and six gauge. Um, so solid wire is just one solid piece of copper and then stranded is like 30 different little pieces of copper twisted together inside of the wire itself. Um, and then we got your switch leg, which is just a piece of Romex going up to a certain object. So usually a switch leg is referred to as a light, um, is referring to in a, a lighting application. So you have your switch box and then you have a, a Romex wire going up to the light and that is that wire is just identified as a switch leg um, to turn on the light. And then you got your box, your nail on boxes or any type of box. Uh, which is just a box with um, nails on the side of them to nail to a stud. And there's also like the fake and bake boxes, which are can also be nail on boxes, but um, they're just made with a different type of material, which um, they're called fake and bake because um, they are pretty brittle and um, they're not like a real box. So they're um, just like a kind of like a uh, not carbon fiber, but the That'd be crazy, but it's a fiberglass box. So if you hit them, they're gonna smash like instantly and be garbage. So um, and those are usually in a brown color. Um, moving on, we got um, a spinner, which is just a like a, a wire reel to put your wire on top of and that spools off your wire. Um, and those can be on the stud or like a circular disc on the ground. Um, and then we got the whole hog, which is um, kind of going over from the tools from last time. I think I covered this somewhere, but a whole hog is just a a drill you know, with a long drill bit or a short drill bit, but it is used to drill through the studs on a house um, to put all your wire inside of the walls. 
And then moving on from there, we got the studs or studs. And those are just the two by fours and the walls, um, which are used to um, hold the house up, obviously, but also to drill through and put your wire in for electrical and now your boxes too. Um, hanger boxes, all that good stuff. So studs are on the walls and then um, you got your trusses in the ceiling and then also um, like your TGIs on the ground. So I'll go over that as well. Um, so the TGIs are basically like for a two story house, it would be the beams holding up the second story of the house for the floor or also, also in the basement holding up the floor of the house, um, the TGIs, which I'll throw a picture up obviously. Um, and those can be, uh, those have holes in them that can be knocked out to put your wire through and stuff like that. Um, then we got staples and staples are just the uh, little pieces of metal um, in a U shape that um, are used to hold the wire to the studs. So um, it doesn't get um, pinched or damaged or anything like that. So the wire stays inside the walls and stays to the walls. Um, it's just a support for your wire. And then also the, I don't, I forget what these are called. I usually call them forks or fingers, but um, it's a plastic, um, it's a plastic holder for your wire. So instead of using staples, if you have like three or four different wires going into a box, you will nail this onto the stud and then it'll hold your wires in place. It's really neat and very handy. Um, if I remember the name, I'll put it in the video. Um, and then we got the spreader bars or spreader bar boxes, which are, um, just basically a lighting box um, and it spreads apart to the studs um, and those are usually for bathroom lights or ceiling fans or anything like that um, and the ceiling fan ones will need a, um, a different rating to hold the weight of the fan then I already covered the block and then we got the receptacle or the plug um, which is um, just a device you know in every house to plug in your uh, appliances, phone chargers, toasters, whatever you want, um, receptacle. Um, and then we got your switch, which is just to turn on lights. And that can be either a single pole switch used for uh, turning on one thing um, or a series of things off of one switch. If you want a three way, then that is, uh, you can turn something on from two different locations. Um, and then a four way is just uh, multiple, a row of multiple um, three ways, um, but the four way is, is the type of switch if you want to do more than um, two locations. So you got the three way switches, which turn on in t uh, two locations, and then four way is anything more than two, you'll put a four way in between the three ways. So that's kind of confusing, but um, Moving on from there, you got the bushings or the grommets, whatever you want to call them. They are just <clears throat> protectors for the wire. So if you're using, if you're putting something into a metal box, you will want to put a bushing on that. Either um, most of them are have little teeth inside to hold the wire. Some of them, depending on the application, you won't. They'll just be open hold bushings. Now it just protects your wire. And then you got your home run, which we've kind of gone over before, which is just the um, the beginning of a circuit back to the panel breaker in the panel box. Um, so that can be an, either an individual, uh, a dedicated circuit, which is just basically one home run in a box. And it, that's all it is. Like your refrigerator usually is a dedicated circuit. Um, sometimes they're not these days, but um, like, let's just say your microwave is a dedicated circuit. So nothing else is gonna be on that circuit. It's just gonna be the, that one wire inside that box going all the way back to the panel and nothing else will be on that circuit. If you're doing like a kitchen, you can have like one home run, which starts the circuit. And then from there you have your other circuits, your other boxes tied to that, your other receptacles tied to that home run. So you can have like three plugs on a home run, four or five, whatever you want. Um, and then moving on, we got the breaker, which is inside of the panel. So I should probably start with the panel. The panel is your electrical box, which, powers up your house or whatever you are using in this residential setting, your panel would be powering up your house. And that's usually 200 amps these days. Um, and then inside the panel is the breakers, which are um, each individual circuit, basically an on off switch. And it also protects against different things. Some of them are GFI, which protect against water. Some of them are AFCI, which protect against 
um, arc faults and stuff like that. Uh, um, so there's a few different options for the breakers. Um, basically a little, someone I did told it, told me before it's like a little computer, like a little computer chip, which, um, detects if there's any problems and stuff like that. Um, and then you got your hot neutral and ground, which is inside of the wire. Um, like inside of your Romex, you got your black wire, which is your hot, your neutral is your white wire. And then your ground is usually your bare wire. If you're in a commercial application, it'll be in a green, sh a green, um, coating of plastic or insulation. Um, and then you got your feeder, which goes into the panel, which is just your, the wire going into the panel is called the feeder. So in the house it's called the Romex because that's kind of like the brand of the wire, but the wire going into the panel feeding, powering up the panel is called the feeder. Um, and that's usually, um, a different type of wire. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Um, it's like, a. I'm not even gonna attempt to remember what that is, but I'll throw it on the screen if I remember. Um, certain type of wire for that. Um, like the SCU, SC, SC, I forget. Uh, it's been a long time. Um, and then you got your meter, which is on the outside of the house, which is where um, a, a box is installed, where the power company m measures the power of how much power is being used in the house. Um, so that usually, takes a feeder in and then another outgoing feeder into the panel itself. Um, and then you got a disconnect, which is usually used in certain applications outside of the house, like for an air conditioner. So you have a little disconnect box. Um, and then moving on from there, going back to some of the boxes, we have the pancake box, which is just a little metal box. If you are, if, if you need to mount a box on a certain place and there's a stud in the way, you mount this little pancake box to the stud directly, and then you can uh, hang what you need to there. Usually used in a uh, bathroom application for uh, vanity light, or sometimes like a light, like um, like for a dining room light or something like that. Um, and then I also just learned this one, a fan cake box, which is where you need to hang a ceiling fan. Um, but it is a stronger type of box where it does not have the tabs. Um, so the if you're hanging a ceiling fan, it won't collapse eventually due to gravity, but it'll be, um, it'll have the holes directly in the box. So there will be no tabs. Um, so it's stronger and rated for the box. <clears throat> and then you have like your fan brace or another type of spreader bar um, for a fan, fan brace box um, to hold the weight of a fan. Um, and then a few more, the outside of the house got the, the bubble cover or the in-use cover, which is for um, a box on the outside of the house where um, like usually you have two boxes on the outside of a house um, two, for two receptacles. Um, and then the bubble cover is for putting on the outside so you can plug something in and it is still protected from the water while it's being in use. Um, I don't know what this TGI stands for. Okay, TGI stands for, we already went over that um, in the flooring or in the ceiling of a two-story house. Um, and then you got your ladder, which is basically just something to stand on to get you to a higher location, usually used for anything um, in the ceiling. So you're gonna be using ladders a lot um, as an electrician if that is something you're doing in the residential um, setting. Um, and then lastly, a junction box which is used as a splice point or also um, just to distribute power. Usually it's used like in an application where something got messed up or forgotten and you have to add something after the fact. Um, so you might not see too many junction boxes in a residential setting, but it's more for a commercial. Um, but there are some settings where you would use a junction box, like in an attic or something, um, to tie things together or add another um, wire into a circuit or something like that. So um, that is mainly just a single gang box and then you just tie your wires together and put a blank cover on top of it. So anyways, those are the terms that I came up with. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, let me know if there's anything I forgot in the comments that you think should be covered on this list and you can browse the comments and see if there's anything useful with a whole bunch of likes that um, might help you out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. 
Hope you guys have a great weekend. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. It helped help the channel out, and I'd love to see you guys back in the next video. Um, big things coming for 2022, working on uh, shirts, hoodies, and stickers right now. Um, so I've been doing that all last night. Um, and also uh, be doing like some custom homemade shirts and stuff like that, and maybe some hoodies if I can find some. Um, and then also maybe a few handmade stickers, but mostly these are gonna be on the website. I'm gonna be using Teespring, um, so stay tuned for that. I will unlock the 10,000 shelf soon, so that will be below videos eventually in the next week or so, if I can figure that out. But anyways, everything else is in the description and the first link in the link tree, so check that out. Um, and then hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload or do live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless, have an awesome rest of your day. Have a safe weekend out there. God bless, peace out. All right, going through the video and getting all the pictures, um, just working on that now. I did miss a few things that I wanted to go over. Uh, one of those was the half hot, which was the receptacle, which has half of the switch, half of the plug uh, controlled by a switch, uh, which we've gone over here in the garage several times. Um, so basically it's just a regular receptacle with the hot tab broken and then um, a, hot, a constant hot on the bottom and then, then a switch wire on the top for the switch application. Um, and then I also found a really helpful picture going over um, a lot of the outside, um, outside of a house, like the service conductors, which I messed up earlier saying. So you got the service conductors, the weather head, um, all that good stuff, disconnecting means, bonding. So I have a picture, I'll throw that up on the screen. Um, and then also uh, you can pause the video if you need to um, check that out. Um, and then also uh, PVC, which is uh, electrical conduit, uh, can be used for electrical conduit, but um, it's a conduit made of plastic, uh, mainly for underground, um, especially in the residential application. And then there's one more thing. So the last thing was the home run helpers, which um, actually someone developed um, for a company that I used to work for, someone developed that. Um, and now I'm pretty sure they're worldwide or something like that, or at least nationwide. So those are, um, uh, home run helpers, which are obviously for home runs or anything else. Basically, it's a, just a support which you can screw down to a stud. It has a bunch of holes that you can just easily run all your wires through so you don't have to staple each individual wire. So if you have 10 home runs, you don't have to staple down 10 wires. You just screw these down to the stud. They have the holes and then you just slide your wires right through and then obviously support it every uh, four to six feet or however often you want to support. Um, and then you just slide your wires through and then it makes it super easy. All right, three more things I thought of. The bell box, which is used for outside applications for waterproofing. Um, also the Carlon LMFC or even um, the regular Carlon tubing. So one of them is LMFC, which stands for Liquid Metallic Flexible Conduit, which is a plastic tubing with uh, metal inside. Um, and that's about it. And then the other one is just called, um, I forget the letters for it, um, but it's just a flexible um, plastic outside, non-waterproof. Um, I don't think it's waterproof, but it is another type of tubing for outside, um, just flexible. Um, and then lastly, I think I forgot to mention the GFCI, which is basically just protection against electrical shock um, and other things, um, which is basically found anywhere near water, like near bathrooms or even in temporary spider boxes for um, outside construction. And I guess I should maybe mention spider boxes as well for temporary power on job sites. Um, but you might just have like, a, that, you might not get that on, on houses. That's more for mainly commercial. So anyways, that's a few more things I could think of. Thanks guys.